I am Per Eriksson. So here we are in Sweden uh, and we're here to meet some of the best chefs in the Nordic kitchen. As you all can see, I'm driving an Audi e-tron, an old electric car. Audi and uh, some of the best chefs in the world, they are focusing on innovation, design and sustainability. Let's meet some of the best chefs in Sweden and hear about their style of cooking. Here we are in Sweden, uh, we're in Westeros, and we're here at uh, Essence, uh, a new restaurant opened in March. And we're here to meet with the chef, uh, Stefan Taylor, who has created a new concept which he called Counter Dinner. to explain for somebody that's never eaten here about your style of cooking, what would you say? I would say that we use a lot of modern techniques, but the flavor combinations are perhaps sometimes quite classical. Uh, we try to build on them uh, and make them our own. Uh, a lot of the dishes that we have, they, they, they start in essence of a simple or classic dish, uh, and then we work on that and we try to develop it and make it unique to, to this restaurant. Where do you find the right produce or products to be able to create the dishes you're talking about? It starts with our suppliers, uh, of course. Uh, we're quite lucky in the fact that we're a smaller restaurant. Uh, we don't need to have large quantities of things, so we can make the most of maybe ingredients that are short in the season or ingredients that are hard to, to come by. How did you get into food in the first place? Uh, I was working in Scotland, uh, in Edinburgh, uh, and by chance I started to work in a, in a nice restaurant uh, with a friend of mine. Uh, after that I just immediately became obsessed with cooking in the kitchen. So. What in cooking was so inspiring for you? Uh, I started in the pastry department, uh, which I liked a lot, and then I moved into the, the other departments. and I just like the way that you can create something from almost nothing. You can take an ingredient and you can turn it into whatever you want. To find the right place to work in, how did you go about to find that? I started my career in quite basic restaurants and then pretty much by chance I ended up in fine dining restaurant uh, and once I had been in that kind of atmosphere I didn't want to leave it again. So which restaurants did you work in? Uh, I worked in a number of restaurants in Edinburgh and Scotland uh, where I'm from. Uh, I worked in a nice restaurant called Prestonfield House. Uh, they had a lovely restaurant called Rhubarb. Uh, then I went to work in uh, Channel Island uh, in Guernsey and in Jersey. Uh, afterwards I moved to Switzerland and then I came here to, to Sweden. So when did you decide then to open your own restaurant? Uh, in 2016 I started a pop-up concept uh, which developed into a full-time restaurant uh, and with that restaurant I was able to progress and move forward uh, and eventually open this restaurant. This restaurant, uh, Essence, uh, with the concept of counter dinner could you explain what is that? It started on my old restaurant where I worked completely by myself uh, and I wanted a restaurant that could function on one person. Uh, the obvious way to do that is to take away waiting staff. Uh, so we only have chefs here. Uh, we serve everybody and they sit at the table. And it's also to do with, I want people to be able to ask questions. I want them to be able to look at things. I want them to be able to smell things. I want them to be able to have a, a more kind of, uh, how do you say, like connected experience. So the closer the guest is to us, the more we can give them back. It's a fantastic design on the restaurant. Who is the designer? I, I, it started with me, I designed it myself, and then we got people to come in and paint and stuff. And some things were done twice. The counter dinner and designing it, what were you thinking of creating that concept? It's the way that I like to eat, uh, and it's also the way that I like to work. I mean, when we work in the kitchen, it's in some restaurants, if you don't have a direct connection with the guests, you never know how they think about your food. If we make something here and someone didn't like it, we would know very quickly about that because we can see it. Uh, and it works the other way around too. It's very nice when you have someone eating in the restaurant 
actually get some feedback and some like uh, how to say like admiration for what you're doing it, it adds to the passion and it makes you want to work more it makes you want to work harder and better building your concept counter dinner how do you build your menus i mean the first things we think of of course is the seasons what's in season we think a lot about textures i don't think that the taste is the only important thing on the plate i think that everything should be important the presentation the taste the texture everything uh, so when we make the menu we also try to think about the order in which you eat the food i mean you should start maybe with something lighter as well as the wine the wine should be lighter in the beginning and then we should get a little bit stronger and more powerful taste uh, as the dinner goes on uh, and we also try to think about that we are not just serving meat dishes or fish dishes maybe we are serving some meat dishes some fish dishes or some vegetarian dishes it all depends on what we can get and, and what's available uh, when we actually design a dish we test it of course before we serve it to the guest and I would say that 90% of the things that we write down on paper, by the time they get to the table, they are very different. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. that, it, it always happens like yeah. that, but that's the essence of cooking, I think. I think your dishes, they are extremely aesthetic. Uh, you spend a lot of time creating uh, the look of the dish as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think it's important, especially when you have counter dining. I mean, people, they sit there and we build most of the dishes directly in front of the guests. I mean, they watch us put it on piece by piece. Uh, so it's important that it looks good from start to finish. It's yeah. not just the end result. Could you explain some of the dishes uh, of the ingredients? What kind of ingredients are you mixing? I mean, uh, like I said earlier, a lot of the dishes that we have, they do start with a classic uh, combination of flavors. I mean, for our signature dishes, uh, steak tartare, it doesn't mean that we always use steak or beef. We can use another meat or even fish sometimes. Uh, but we try to keep the classical elements. Uh, for example, when you have a raw beef that you call in Sweden or a steak tartare, when you have it in, in, uh, in France, they always serve a raw egg yolk on the top. So we actually do a, still a raw egg yolk, but we do a gravat, or they say in Sweden, or a cured egg yolk in salt and sugar. It changes the texture of the egg, and then we can grate it on top of the dish. So you, in essence, you still have exactly the same ingredients, but we have done it in a more modern and maybe more interesting way for our guests. Uh, on, the, on the tartare, we also tend to use uh, truffle. Uh, you cannot have truffle all year long. You can't have truffle in the summer, not the same one that you have in the winter. So when we take the summer truffle, uh, we have to think about a new way to use it, a way that we can actually get flavor out of it. Uh, so we make our own oil. So we vacuum the truffles in oil. We cook them in the oven, almost sous vide, uh, and it extracts as much flavor as possible. And then we use that one to make like an emulsion with Dijon mustard, almost like a mayonnaise, if you like. Uh, but then we can still use the same, the same ingredients, just different types and in different times of the year. Building your counter dinner menus, uh, how do you go about to do that? Uh, do you have a different name on the different dishes or how do you, is your thinking around that? Uh, I would say that we don't have starters or desserts. We have savory things and we have sweet things. The idea here is that you have many courses. So we have a minimum of seven dishes, but that doesn't mean that you might, you might have eight or nine dishes. Uh, and the idea behind that is that you should always want a little bit more. So when you've finished it, if you have enough of something, you're satisfied. But if you always want just a little bit more, yeah. uh, then it leaves you interested and it leaves you looking forward to the next dish. Uh, building this uh, counter dinner concept uh, yeah. with the menus of the seven or more dishes, uh, when do you think you will be within a year or two years? I mean, I hope that we can somehow get some accolades and some more attention. It's good for the business. We need people to, to come and eat here. Uh, we're very fortunate that we're a small restaurant. It's quite easy to fill up the restaurant. Uh, I, never, I never plan to put more seats. If anything, one day I would like to be able to put a few less seats. Uh, maybe to have not a waitress, but someone maybe to help more talking with the guests and uh, finishing dishes. So Stefan, as you know, uh, many of the top chefs in the world are using the concept of no waste kitchen or farm to fork eating or nose to tail eating. What's your take on that? For sustainability, I think that we are a very sustainable restaurant. But probably the biggest fact that makes us that way is that we serve one menu. Uh, we don't have a la carte. Uh, what we serve is, is what you get. Uh, and for that reason, we don't waste much. I mean, anything that's left over, I eat it myself. And you can see I'm not the biggest guy in the world. <laughs> so. Do you buy whole animals or do you buy parts of animals? How do you go about to do that? Well, this depends on the animal. Of course, if we use a cow, we can't buy a whole cow. But we do try to use a lot of small game birds when they're in season. 
Uh, if we use fish, we often use maybe scallops, uh, which we get in the shell. We use the rom, we use the uh, scallop part, we use every piece. Uh, and especially with birds, uh, when we do a bird dish, we tend to have like a variation of wild duck or a variation of quail, where we will take the bird to pieces and we will use every single piece. We use the bones to make a sauce, we use the legs, we use the breast, we use everything. Even when we have our duck dish at the moment, we use the heart from the duck. Uh, we smoke it, we dry it, we grate it on top. Uh, and if we don't use it on the same day, maybe we use it the next day. Uh, so we don't waste much at all here. If you were to give an advice uh, to a young person that wants to become a chef like yourself, yeah. what would you say? Uh, I would say travel. Uh, go and work in the best restaurants that you can and don't be afraid to move around. Mm -hmm.